All right. Uh, welcome to uh, my first YouTube video, I suppose. Um, this is a 1955 Willys inner door latch assembly. And these things are notorious. They get a little water in them and they freeze up inside and they stop working. Um, I've already rebuilt this one. Just showing that you can rebuild these and this is a video of how to. So as you can see, this one's all functioning as it should now. Um, it cost me about $6.50 from the hardware store and I used some basic tools. This is the passenger side. This is the driver's side. I haven't done this one yet. I'm going to do this one for everybody so that they can see. Um, I think if you buy these new when I was looking it up earlier today, uh, if you could even find them, they were like easily $200 a side. Um, and that's just, that's kind of ridiculous. I, I think it's highway robbery, especially like I said, I figured out how to rebuild this for $6.50 or so and all parts from your normal hardware store that you'd have pretty much anywhere. So, um, start out by saying what tools we're going to use here. Um, the main inhibitor with these is rust. So the rust seizes the mechanisms and that's what causes them not to function correctly. Now, I've been bathing uh, my latch assemblies in a concoction of WD-40 and PB Blaster. I was hoping that I wouldn't have to rebuild them, but it didn't work, so I'm, I'm going to. Uh, the other thing you're going to need, I'm using a wire wheel on a drill, just because I'm lazy. I also have just your standard wire brush, nothing crazy. I've got a set of safety glasses, uh, and I've got this angle grinder with a cutoff wheel, just a four and a half inch grinder with a cutoff wheel, safety glasses to go with. I've got a set of ice grips. I've got this screwdriver. I've got a chisel that I don't care about. Um, this becomes kind of a crucial part here. You can see the end of mine is really messed up, but uh, the way that they seal these together is they have these little ears that they fold over inside the casing and that's how they hold the two halves of this case together. I've elected to just use a chisel and knock those ears completely off and that's how I've how I've performed getting this apart to start cleaning it and rebuilding it. I've got some sandpaper this is uh, fine grit I think this is like 120 grit or so um, metal sandpaper. I've got a punch you are going to need a punch or something like a punch. I mean, a screwdriver that you don't care about hammering on something. Punch is helpful. I've got a few different sizes of drill bits. I've got this one, which I just use for piloting. I've got this one, which is a little bit bigger. This is the size of some of those rivets that we're going to be drilling out. So this is the one I've been using to drill out rivets. I've got this 3 8 bit and this is kind of the one of the final pieces that we'll do uh, you'll see this at the end this is this is a key component of actually finishing this process and using some of that hardware that we purchased and then we've got this allen wrench all right this is a uh, allen wrench to fit the socket cap screw that i bought i think this one is 3 16 okay and then other basic tools a ratchet with a 3 8 socket, this quarter drive, 3 8 socket, nothing special, and two clamps, any type of clamp you have works, C clamp or these, these are just the ones I happen to have. Alright, so the first thing is that we want to look at this and we want to just kind of take in what we have, where things are located, especially if you don't have them both out side by side. Um, it could be really difficult if, if you weren't looking at it to figure out how to put it back together. So essentially you got this little bird's beak here and the short side is up. So when this is sitting in the door, when this is sitting in the door, it's sitting kind of, it's sitting this direction, right? It's this latches on the pin going down and it should have like a locking catching mechanism. And obviously that's why we're rebuilding this because this one doesn't have it. Okay, so uh, you can see that I, I had to fight mine quite a bit to get it out of the door. So I've got a few locations here where I actually 
the screw broke on me and I had to drill what was left of it to get it out of the door or it stripped and I couldn't. These ones in the bottom came out clean, but uh, these two up top didn't. Not a big deal right now. We'll get there. Um, it, it's not really a priority to figure that out at, at this time. So there are a couple screws we're going to want to drill though. And the first one is going to be, we want to drill anything right, this stud right here. So this is like a little keeper on this. We don't need to drill this to take it apart. And so what we'll actually end up doing, we'll just weld a nut to that to get it out. Okay, so I'm gonna move my bucket here, the designated work platform, and we're gonna get into breaking this thing open. So before I, before I knock the ears off of this, this is inside of here, there's a little piece that looks like Texas, you'll see it, but uh, this rivet right here that I'm kind of pointing at is what holds the whole mechanism that's stuck right now in line. And so what I want to do is I want to drill it out from this side and then I'm going to use that punch and I'm going to punch the pin out the back. Okay, so start there, set it on my floor, right here, bring the back, and then this. Okay, so I want to drill out this one right here. Just to the best of your ability. Keep her straight as you can. I'm just going to step up a size. I don't want to mess up this hole too bad, so. Um, I'm just going to use this 3 8 to drill out that little rim. I wasn't quite centered. No big deal. Use a little bit bigger bit, clean it up. Alright, I can see the inner seat of my rivet now. I'm just using this socket underneath the back side of this so that I have something to drive this rivet into. So I'm going to set that on there. Set that kind of like so. I'm going to use my punch, I'm going to grab just your typical hammer, nothing crazy, line it up, send it home. You might have to set this on a little firmer surface than a bucket, but it is starting to come actually. Uh, i got to set it on a little firmer surface. Alternative, set it on your vice grips if you got them. So, we just drove out this, this pin, right? Let me see if I can get this where you can see a little better. We just drove out this pin, and it just had that rivet on the other side, just a flat pin. This is the piece that the whole mechanism kind of hinges on. This is the center cam lever, and um, the piece that's stuck inside is actually, it's not stuck on this on the on the round part of the shank that's holding it it's stuck because there's a bunch of springs and the plates hold pressure to it so it's actually frozen to the side of these plates so for the next part what we want to do and we're just going to set this off to the side we're not going to reuse it but i want to draw a comparison to it later Ooh, i used this for stucco last okay so we're just going to move that out of the way Obviously, as you can see, we've got a very sanitary workspace here. Doesn't matter. Works the same. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, this is probably already starting to free up a little. And this one is, actually. So just removing that pin already has made a huge difference in how this is working. So we've actually, just by allowing that to have some movement, we've already kind of got this one working. I'm not sure if you can see that. It wasn't working before, but now we are. Um, but we're still going to go through the rest of this, just like I did the other one, because I think that what I'm going to show you is going to prevent more problems down the road. 
Um, or if, if yours is worse than this one is, which the one I had on the other side of this, it was really bad. So um, I had I did have to tear the other one completely down. Like the, the inner piece was actually rusted to the side of this casing. All right, so now I'm gonna, this is where our chisel is gonna come in. I'm gonna take off this ear and I'm gonna take off these two ears as flush as I can. So I'm gonna get my chisel and I'm just gonna come in here, kind of hold it up with my boot, get a good angle on it, take my hammer again. We're at a point where we need to drill the other rivet. That's what's holding us up here. So I have the ears. This one actually went a little bit better. It wasn't so rusted as the other one that I did. Um, so these ears actually bent back like they should instead of just shearing off. Um, now I want to remove, you can choose here, but the, the better choice is I want to remove this rivet right here. That's, as I'm looking at the bird's mouth or the, the actual latch portion of this, I want to remove this rivet right here. And what this one is, is this is like a, a keeper pin. Um, it prevents the travel of this door handle from going too far. So we'll actually replace this with a different piece later, but just to give you another close up, I'm looking at it this way. It's this one right here is the one that I want to remove. So let's do that. Okay, pieces are going to start coming out at this point. That's okay. So I'll show you how they go back in. We got this spring and this. This is that this is that Texas piece I was referring to. As you can it looks just like the state of Texas. Um, this is what actually latches and engages the different components of your door. So don't lose that guy. And then this is the spring that returns him to his default position ready to latch. So so when it's latched, think of it like uh, cocking a firearm. When this is engaged and it's latched, it's basically on a trigger with a sear. And when you press the button on the door handle or you squeeze the door handle or on the inside you crank it, it releases this trigger and it allows the hinge to pop back up. And that's what keeps it um, either locked or unlocked. Latched or unlatched. And so now, I'm just going to continue to kind of work at this thing. So, now, now we can see the root cause of why this thing isn't opening. So, this is your lever. This is the lever um, that rides inside of the door so this little crossed section of it that's what the inner door handle engages with all right and it rides inside of this boss kind of like this this boss the stamped boss here is the only thing that keeps this in place all right i'm going to just set it to the side for now this spring is the spring that holds tension on the uh, actual latching assembly so i'm going to remove that for right now and then uh, this piece here, this is the mechanism that the little bird's mouth is actually attached to. And I'm just going to leave this alone on this one, all right? This is your lock assembly here. What I am going to do, though, and, and granted, my parts have been soaking in a little bath of WD-40 and penetrating oil for, uh, I would say, close to 24 hours now. But if yours haven't, yours might need to soak. Because what I'm about to do is I'm just going to take a wire wheel on my drill and I'm just going to clean up all of these surfaces as best I can. So, now I got my pieces and they're all kind of ready to go back together at this point. Um, the first thing I want to point out is that your door latch should be in this position. So from the back side this lobe, the single side, you want to start putting this back together with this lobe up against the stop. All right, and I'll get in closer so you guys can see that. So this lobe right here, this one, where it hits that, that's the stop. And when I start rebuilding this, I want that on the stop. 
Okay, now I've got my Texas piece. Texas is gonna go in on a new centering pin that I got. So, where did it go? Oh man, things been flying in here. Oh, I gotta find my bag of parts. sandpaper but something I had to do on my other one is especially in this area where this pin was bossed I had to take I had to get in here with a lot of sandpaper and clean this up just because the the other door handle I did the other latch assembly I did was extremely rusty um, I had to do quite a bit more in regards to that so this one wasn't so bad I got off easy um, but if you do you might have to take some sandpaper just like so and Kind of touch up your different areas, and I like to give it a shoot of WD-40 to. Well, I got it out, and I can spray it off. Okay. All right, back to where we're at. So, what I found is this guy so where are you come on out under, under this again yep okay always under that so what it is it looks like this um and inside this one is a uh five sixteenths it's five sixteenths and on the back it's just threaded and this is the machine screw that I bought to go with it. So I think that this was like $1.39 and this was like $1.39. So $2.70 into this so far. So let's track that. All right. So it just goes something like that. Obviously, like that's how, that's how nuts and bolts work. So now what we're going to do with this, this guy's going to act as our new boss. All right. And... I'm going to set this over the hole that I just drilled to drill this other thing out. You might have to open up this hole a little bit more. Um, but I want to insert this from the latch side. All right, so I want the back of this on the latch side. And I'm going to open up this hole a little bit more because I want this to be able to move freely for a minute. And is this one the same size? Yeah. So see how this spins? This little Texas piece spins pretty freely on this. I want it to do the same inside of here. So I just take my 3 8 bit and I'm going to open up that just a little bit. 3 8 Okay, I'm opening up the hole that that rides in. Alrighty, wasn't the prettiest, but we got her done. Now, I'm going to insert this from the side like we talked about before. From this side, it should sit kind of flush in there. One thing to mention here is that this is going to be too long. I'm going to have to actually see how that sits in there. So that's there. And then on the back side, that's what it looks like right now. All right. Front and back. This is the other half. This is going to sit kind of like this. But obviously, that hole is too small, too. So we're going to open up the hole, this hole right here on this cover up to 3 8 as well. Gonna do things a little bit safer this time maybe. Maybe. As long as it's convenient. Yep, use a set of pliers. Opening up this hole. towels as uh, presentation demos because everything likes to grab them and throw your parts throw your parts everywhere like this one's now in the solution again all right now i gotta go find 
there's one spring, there's the other spring. There's Texas. So the only thing I'm missing right now is a little cam lever guy, and I heard something hit the bucket over here. And it did. So now we got our cam lever back. We got our bucket back. Crisis averted. What I was showing you is when this is all sitting together, like it's supposed to be, and it's all tight, this thing is going to be too long. Maybe. I might have to clean this up a little more to show you effectively. Yeah, I'm going to have to clean this up a little more. It's going to be too long. We're going to have to take some, some length off of it. Stick this guy. Clean this. I'm cleaning up this ear a little. So I'm going to go I was saying it's gonna be too long too long right when it's all snapped together we don't want that sticking out like that because uh, we want to be able to put our bolt as flush to it as we can so what I did oh you're also gonna need a sharpie I don't know where that's at right now figures Found the sharpie. So what I'm doing is I'm just holding this flush on the back. I'm taking my sharpie. Oh, where's the camera? Where are you? And I'm marking around the inside of this nut where I want to cut it off, where it makes contact with this other piece here. All right. So I got kind of a line. Pop this out the back now. Okay. So you can see. I need to take about that much of it off where the black line is. If I had a lathe, this would be really nice. I'd just turn it down on a lathe. I don't have one. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use an angle grinder. Do this number. And then we're going to get out the vice grips. And we're gonna figure out something like this. Torque that guy down. And then let me take this. What I do is I just kind of clean up the inside of my threads here. Just a little, just cleaning up my threads. That's all we're doing. All right, so now I've got this piece adequately shortened and so I'm going to take this back apart so from the bottom here I'm putting this in as shown all right and this once again this is a 5 16 18 T nut okay my cam is in the locked position I want to take my Texas and the single side, the single side, so see how that one's got an angle? Oops. See how that side on the left has got an angle and the side on the right doesn't? I'm calling the side on the right that doesn't have the angle the single side, okay? So the single side is going to go towards the cam. As shown. Maybe. Okay. And yeah, show. All right, sorry, the lock mechanism was doing what it was supposed to. It was holding me up. Um, 
So this lock mechanism, what is going on with this guy right now? He's got a little bit of a misalignment issue and it's been going on longer than I've been around. All right, so this lock comes down and just to kind of show you how the mechanism generally works, I'm gonna pull the lock up right now. This cam is what rides along inside of here. So it's stop, it's there. As you open the door, you can see how it engages. So this is in the fully locked position. This little arm here should line up, if I can get it, should line up. Something's not right though. All right, so we can see that how everything meshes together. Everything meshes together. Everything meshes together. This guy, this little lobe, he sits upright in here like this, and he engages inside of this little crease. But as you can see, we're not going to be able to get him in there quite yet because, number one, I've got some studs in the way. These need to go away um, because these are our mounting holes. Number two, we need the other half of our plate assembly. And while we're here, I'm going to straighten out this ear that I messed up a little. Back to where we were. Springs. So there's going to be two springs inside of yours. The first one is this guy. Small, kind of just a single-sided spring. This end with the hook on it is going to go loosely, just leave it loose for now, like so. All right, set it in there, let it kind of ride in this crook. This is backwards. This is backwards. How does that happen? Can't, can't talk and demonstrate. Okay, there we go. This little crook right here. This little guy right here. Okay, he's gonna ride like so through this slot. Let's leave him hang for now. Your other spring here, this one's a little trickier. So you got this coil spring. She's for sure warm. All I've done now, I got it all back together. I got this in there. I uh, tack welded my little pins that I drove out at the beginning of the video. Just to show you guys that it all works here now. As you can hear it, lock, click, click means that it's engaging that Texas pattern like it should. This is your exterior door handle right here, and if I pull this, so now you can tell this is working the way it should. Another check, we're going to engage it. We're going to go from our interior here now, and on the interior handle, if I can find my screwdriver, everything's kind of gone awry at this point, but here it is. Uh, this should also engage it, and it does. It's on the back side, let me show you, so everyone can see. That's on there. Oops, touchy. Okay, yeah, uh, it's hard to do this left-handed. I got it holding by the lock now, so I'm on the interior where I could line up in the door, give it a quick turn, it opens, perfect. All right, now, 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 now. Gotta find that little chingus I made earlier. So I should have another machine head in here somewhere. There's my machine head. This is a machine head 1032. This is a 1032 nut. This isn't the one I bought. This is the one that I improvised because I had to weld the one that I bought to the uh, stud that was stuck earlier. So I'm just gonna come in here 
that slots into there. This is your keeper. This is what keeps it from overextending. And I'm just going to crank this guy down. You don't want to make this too tight. Just make him tight enough. Um, you don't want him to stick. All right, that last step was just to go ahead and grind her flush. So now it'll sit inside the door jam without interfering with anything. And just do a final check to make sure everything still works. Now you can see it's holding open and it's shut. One thing I'll notice about this one, or I did notice about it when I was going through it, um, the other one that I that I put together, that first one that had the green on it, let's see if that's still floating around here, I think it is. Um, where did I set that one? I can show you. I'll have to find it, but um, what I noticed, the other one had a lot less wear in it. So even though it was really rusted and it didn't look good, um, it didn't have near the amount of wear in it that this one did. This one had a lot of wear inside of it, and as a result of that, it fought me a bunch. Uh, it was really difficult to get it put back together because the tolerances and the parts where the locks inside engage with one another were really worn down. And what ends up happening as a result of that is that you're relying on those interfaces to hold enough pressure to be able to get this spring, that big coil spring in here, you have to have enough pressure to get that set initially. And if you don't, which is the problem that I was running into, then uh, it makes it really, really hard. And so I fought this coil spring for probably like an hour. I mean, it was just a ridiculous amount of time. I didn't spend that much time fighting it on the other side, but nothing you can do about it. Uh, that's how it goes sometimes. I mean, I don't feel like that's a bad thing to know about. It's it's still kind of tweaked actually. <laughs> so this will be a little bit of a fun install getting it back into the Jeep, but we'll get it there. I mean, it's, it fought me a lot and, and just not only the rust because there was a lot less rust on this one, but the, the overall shape that it was in was really difficult. It was hard to manage it. So, um, locks. As you can see, it locks. Should lock. My hand's not on the trigger, it locks. That was one of the pieces that was really, really worn down and this was the lock, the lock mechanism. So actually right now it's not wanting to lock. Yeah, if I really, if I, yeah, it's not locking. So that was something that I fought a lot is that that lock was really worn down and unfortunately I wasn't actually able to get that going because there's just not enough of that lock left. And I wasn't gonna make a new one of these pieces here, although I guess I could have. Um, but if I get back into this one, that's a decision I can make is if I wanna, if I wanna rebuild that lock mechanism or if I even care. Um, that's for a later date and time. <laughs>